Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel Physics Surgery and here we are in Pathfinder Solutions series and I have brought forward a question on removal of dielectric from a capacitor gap in an RC circuit. Okay, so this removal is different from the usual removals that we study in a JE advanced syllabus where the removal is a quasi static or a slow process. Here you could see the problem talks about a very quick and abrupt removal of a dielectric. It's an interesting concept and often confused and misunderstood concept by, by the students. So let's dive into the problem. And also at the end of the problem, I'll give you a practice question to strengthen our concept on this. And I'll come up with the solution of that in the next video on the RC circuits. Okay, so here we move forward to the formal wording of the question. In case you have not read this problem, please do pause the video here, give it a try for five to 10 minutes and do come back for the concept and the solution explanation of this situation. Okay, so here we go. An air filled parallel plate capacitor of capacitance C is connected through a resistance R to an ideal voltage source of electromotive force V. The dielectric plate of dielectric constant K is inserted in the capacitor to occupy the whole space between the plates. After a steady state is reached, the plate is quickly pulled out. Which of the following is correct expression for the heat generated in the resistance until a steady state is reached again after pulling it out. Okay, so four op options are given. You're supposed to choose one of the following. Okay, so here we move ahead with the concept. I have divided this uh, removal and further subsequent time into two steps. One is the quick removal where we'll analyze the circuit just before to just after the removal. So I have assumed that the instant of removal is T is equal to zero and just after is considered as T is equal to zero plus. So here you could see the dielectric, which I represented in red color is still there and there is a steady state already acquired. So in that steady state current is zero, which means the entire V voltage, which is across the battery should be completely across this capacitor whose effective capacitance is K times C, K is the dielectric constant. So the charge on the metal plate would be KCV, right? And therefore the current would be zero because there's no potential drop across this. And also it's a steady state. Now, once you abruptly remove this and consider this right-hand side situation at T is equal to zero plus, that means just after removal, the current starts flowing, okay? The reason is very simple. Now the capacitance has changed its value to C and therefore the potential difference would abruptly change. And since the potential difference across this and this don't match, there, won't, there will be some current that would be flowing, okay? Now, the idea is to understand that the charge actually doesn't abruptly change. Okay, so that is what I have written. From T is equal to zero to T is equal to zero plus, the value of the charge remains the same no abrupt change in the charge is allowed during this so-called DT amount of time, a small infinitesimal amount of time. How do you prove this idea? The proof is by contradiction. If you assume that the charge has changed, then there should be an infinite current flowing because the change in charge should flow in this particular wire divided by the time taken and the time taken is almost zero. So charge divided by time goes to infinity, which is not allowed. Current cannot have infinite value in this situation. The reason if current were to be infinity, then the potential drop across this should be provided as infinity. Remember Ohm's law I into R, which cannot be provided by a finite EMF. Okay, so since the current cannot be infinity, the charge has to remain the same. That's the step one where we realized that after removal, the charge stays as KCV for that short duration. Now we go to the step two, a lot of things on the board. Just follow my lead. Try to see where I'm pointing on the board and explaining you will all be okay, okay? So long duration to achieve new steady state. We are looking at T is equal to zero plus that we already analyzed to T tending to infinity where again, it takes time to reach the new steady state. This is quite obvious to us that in the new steady state at the large, in large period of time, the current again has to be zero. Therefore, voltage across this should be voltage across this. And since the capacitance now is C only, then the charge has to become C times V. So initial value of KCV that we analyzed in the previous slide now has to become CV. And this would be an exponential decay like a similar to RC circuit, okay? Now, since there is a decay, there is a current which would be non-zero and function of time, obviously, and that would dissipate some heat in the resistance. So 
an alternative way to solve this problem, which I'm not exploring here, right? I would like to do it in another way. So the alternative way, which I could see here, is to write the Kirchhoff's voltage loop law here, okay? And integrate to get the value of that current and then perform the value of integration i square r dt from zero to infinite time and you'll be able to get the expression so but we're not going to do it we're going to do it as a in a smarter way of work energy theorem from right at the start to right at the end so when i write that for that, that this particular system right system contains battery resistor and capacitor and these wires that is my system boundary W all that is work done by all agents internal and external should be equal to change in kinetic energy of two forms. Okay, one is the microscopic kinetic energy and other is macroscopic macroscopic in this problem for this duration is zero. Remember, there is no dielectric at all in this step two. Okay, there's no mechanical agent in this step two and the circuit doesn't move macroscopically there is no movement for this particular circuit. So this macroscopic KE is equal to zero. Microscopic KE can be associated with the heat that is generated in this circuit as primarily due to the resistance. Okay, so you could say at microscopic level, there will be collisions of those free electrons at the lattice points and that is cause for the heat, which we term as integration of I square R dt. So this is heat. And on the WL side, there would be work done by battery and also work done by the conservative electric field that would be developed inside this particular capacitor right from this state to this state. Work done by conservative forces would be minus delta U and therefore work done by battery is the charge flown multiplied by the voltage. How much is the charge flown overall from the starting stage to the last stage? The change in this charge flows through this particular battery. Not only that, if you carefully observe, the charge actually flows back into the positive terminal. That means it flows in the anti-clockwise sense and enters the terminal, which ensures that the battery gets charged. Therefore, work done by battery is minus of the flown charge multiplied by V, which gives you this term. Minus delta U is the U initial of the capacitor minus U final of the capacitor, which I have written as charge square by 2C. Q square by 2C is the potential energy state value of this and potential energy state value I'm subtracting from initial and final because of the minus sign. So if you carefully go slightly up, the value of the heat, therefore, is this entire term. If I take the K minus 1 CV square common, it will be minus 1 here. And you could see a K square minus 1 here, right? So if you take K minus 1 common, it will be a K plus 1 divided by 2 coming out from these two terms here. Rearranging, you'll end up getting K minus 1 whole square divided by 2 into CV square, which is what you're going to search in the options. And I think I see it in option D. Okay, right? So are you ready for the practice problem? This is going to be even more interesting one and solving this practice problem uh, gets rid of a lot of misconceptions in the topic of RC circuits, including dielectrics. Okay, so this is the one again from the book. It's from the check your understanding section 18th question. There are three subjective parts to this particular question. So please try to do them one by one in a careful manner, applying all the concepts that you have learned uh, in the lessons of RC circuits with dielectrics and try to see. And let me highlight something very important. I'm not going to give away whether there is mistake or not. So my question is, in case you have already attempted this, please do comment below if there is any mistake in the given key in the book in one of these three options. If there is a mistake, what is it and why is it so? If there isn't any, anyway, you'll wait for my solution in the upcoming video of the Pathfinder solution series. Okay, apart from Pathfinder solution series, there are other series that I have listed down. So please try to carefully go through the description below this video. You'll find a lot of useful stuff just in case you are new to this channel, try to explore them. Okay, so please do like, share and subscribe to my channel and watch two or three videos every day uh, before your JE advanced examination. So so I've already produced by the time of recording of this video, somewhere on 180 plus videos, each and every video unique in its own way and its presentation. And at least it will increase your love for JE physics. Okay. Thank you for uh, staying this long and see you in the next video.